This is part two to a two-part video where I compare the Nikon 500PF to the Nikon 100 to 400 lens on the Z9. If you missed part one, I'll put a link in the description below. In part one, I used the 100 to 400. In this video, I'm using the 500PF and the results were very surprising and I can't wait to share them with you. So come on, let's go. Somewhere at the end of this drab colored, dust soaked road in South Florida, there is a splash of color just waiting to be photographed and this convoy of curious camera wielders has come to bear witness to the glorious roseate spoonbills that gather here each year in spring. And with the sun still trying to make its way over the horizon, the early morning light paints these birds in soft pastel shades of pink. It's nesting season, and these birds are busy shopping for the perfect foliage to complete their nests. Let's get some shots. My early morning arrival rewards me with some stunning shots overflowing with color, contrast, character, charisma, and cuteness. Look at this bird, simply outstanding. As this beauty makes its approach, it gives me a nod and then a little wink. It then unfurls its fabulous wingspan before slowly landing in the grass at the edge of the water. The first thing I'm noticing, I mean, almost immediately with the 500 PF, at this location, it's too much lens. I keep having to back up in order to prevent myself from clipping the birds. And in doing so, I'm missing the landing shots because there's like this grassy little green hill. And when I back up, the hill gets in the way and they land behind the hill. So I'm actually, I got too much, of, uh, too much lens here. I never thought I would be saying that. So in this instance, the 100 to 400 is actually a lot better in this location just for that reason. Oh wait. There's some more coming. The conditions this morning are absolutely perfect. The wind is at my back, so these birds are coming right in, and ah, what a perfect landing. Let's get some shots. In this shot, the Z9 with the 500 PF back focused, and it focused on the bird's shoulders. This is a common problem with these birds because their head sticks so far out of the frame. Let's see how quickly it recovers. The next shot is spot on. Look at that beautiful bird. But then the lens or the camera or the combination of the two back focuses again, and it seems to keep the plane of focus locked onto the bird's shoulders for the rest of the series. This didn't happen once with the 100 to 400, so I'm a little suspicious that the problem might actually be with the 500 PF. In the next series, the focus is soft once again, and it seems to be soft, again, focusing more on the bird's shoulders for the first three shots in the series but then it seems to stabilize and keep the bird's head sharp and in focus. Again, I didn't notice these focus issues when I was shooting the 100 to 400, so I'm gonna lean towards the lens being more of the issue here. In fact, there wasn't a single series that was out of focus with the 100 to 400. As far as focus speed and acquisition goes, the two seem to be pretty much the same. I can't see too much of a difference, but I'll be honest, it's really hard to see if the shot is like critical focus with the Nikon uh, Z9's viewfinder. It's like when you review an image through the viewfinder, it seems to be really low res and that could be a setting that I have wrong, but it's really hard to tell if the image is really sharp in the viewfinder and I'm not digging that at all. Now that's something you don't see every day. This great blue heron has its wings folded up and aimed towards the sun. I think this is a good example of thermoregulation. I'm back over at Spoonbill Landing, and things are a little bit more fast-paced. This bird is looking for something to add to its bungalow back at the rookery. And it's being a little bit picky. But then again, what do I know about building nests? I'm just here to try out this camera and lens combo. And of course, enjoy the beautiful scenery. Aha, I think this bird has found a winner, but will it pass the shake test? Um, apparently not. Let's check back in on this bird in just a little bit. Another thing that's really, really obvious is the vibration reduction on the 100 to 400 is far smoother than the 500 PF. The 500 PF, like when you're shooting video, the stabilization kind of rotates the image like in a circle and it's, it's odd and it's not very pleasing. It makes it harder to shoot. 
The 100 to 400 doesn't do that at all. In fact, I did a lot of great handheld video with the 100 to 400 and it was the smoothest um, vibration reduction I've seen with any Nikon lens yet. How's the shopping going? Oh, apparently pretty good. That looks like quite the find, but I'm not sure how the spoonbill is going to fly out of here with that. Again, what do I know about building nests? Maybe this is the perfect piece. We'll check back in a second. I'm also enjoying the ergonomics better on the 100 to 400 than the 500 PF. I think it's a little bit lighter in, in weight, but it just feels, oh, just overall feels better in my hands. So that's a huge thing. It feels more, more balanced. Like it's easier to handhold, it's easier to pan, um, and it's definitely easier to shoot video with. Good things never seem to go unnoticed, even in the animal world. And apparently this is a prized piece of nesting material because this other spoonbill wants a piece of it too. This is definitely a target rich environment. And that's why I love to hold my spoonbill workshops here. It's a great teaching location. The light is great. The wind is great. And of course you have these amazing pink birds. Let's see if we can capture some more in-flight shots of these beauties. This spoonie comes in in a slightly different location and I squat to get a lower angle trying to bring some of the grass into the shot. Which brings me to this question. What do you prefer? Nice clear shots like the previous ones or some that include the natural elements like the grass and the shots like this? Leave a comment and let me know. In this instance, the Z9 and the 500PF did great tracking the bird, even with the grass in the foreground, but the landing gets missed again because I just have too much lens and backing up puts this hill in the way. In this series, the Z9 misses focus on the first shot, corrects itself for a few frames, but then goes out of focus again. When you have these inconsistencies that aren't always replicatable, is that a word, replicatable? I think so. You start to lose faith in your ability to capture good images when many times it's actually the gear's fault. In this case, I think it's a proximity issue. I'm just too close and the 500 PF can't seem to keep up because the 100 to 400 didn't have the same problem. Stopping down the aperture could have helped save a couple of these shots, but not all of them. I would have had to stop down far too much for my liking and I didn't have to do this with the 100 to 400. And once again, the first shot in the series is out of focus, but the camera corrects itself for the majority of the rest of the shots in the series. But it's this type of inconsistency that I'm talking about. It's troubling and it makes it difficult to want to pick up the Z9 with the 500 PF. I would much rather use the 100 to 400 because it didn't have these issues. And now my problem is there's just too many birds. My target bird has decided to come flying in right behind one of the other birds that was busy shopping for sticks. Hey, I'll take this photo bomb any day. Hey, let's go check back in with those two birds that were fighting and see how things are going. And it looks like they are still trying to determine who gets this prime piece of nesting material. At least it is a somewhat peaceful altercation, even though the original bird's material just got stolen. But that's okay, because there's plenty of material to go around, and now each bird has something to take back to the nest. Special thanks to my friend Michael for letting me borrow his 100 to 400 lens and costing me almost $3,000 because I just ordered my own copy from my friends at B&H. Um, I just didn't really like the way the 500 PF was handling all these birds and I don't think I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna put it up for sale. I like the 100 to 400 much better and that answered a lot of questions for me. I was curious to see if whether the shortcomings I was seeing with the Z9 were mostly related to some of the older lenses and in this case I really think it was. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you next time.